Welcome to Namely 90s, the podcast that takes you back to the time before smartphones, Google, and Y2K. Join your hosts as they relive the pop culture that shaped a generation and the parts that many people wish they could forget. Listen in to the conversation about how the decade defined those who spent their childhood there and how it shaped them as adults. So, turn down the grunge and dial up the internet. Let's get started. It's time for Namely 90s. All right, you're listening to Namely 90s. I'm Andrew. That over there is Brandon. Hi. Say hello to Brandon. Thank you very much. Hi. Um, and you can find us on Twitter at Namely 90s. That's with a nine zero S or online at Namely 90s. Dot com. Dot and today com. we are going to discuss July of 1994. Why don't you bring us up to speed there, Brandon? Uh, travel back with me to July 1994. Um, <laughs> um, 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 um. Uh, so back in July 1994, Jeff Bezos founds Amazon on July. Amazon.com. Founds what? Amazon.com. What kind of kind of service does this company july, provide I've, july 5th july uh, 5th oh amazon oh sure yeah okay that sounds familiar i've never, I never really heard with, of it with two ends uh also <laughs> yeah. july also on july 5th uh cracked rear view day uh, the debut album by hootie and the blowfish drop uh yes. brazil wins the world or wow brazil wins the fifa world cup and Brandon goes dyslexic. Um, in the box office, we have Forrest Gump, Angels in the Outfield, Black Beauty, and The Mask. Oh, love that movie. That's a fun one. Out of all four of those, that's the one you... Okay. Um, and on the <laughs> Billboard Hot 100, I swear by by all... No, sorry. I swear by all for one uh, is the top hit since mid May and through the end of July. And I have never heard of the song before. So um, here are some other songs on the charts for July. 23rd. You have, two, you too have heard that song. I swear by all for one. You've not heard that. No, I, I, I threw it up on YouTube and I, I had not heard that song. You've before. got to be kidding me. I, that's I, I, I'm shocked, frankly. I mean, I, I'm not shocked when I don't know about something, but you, I'm surprised surprise that you know it because really yeah okay i i'm 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 shocked uh, i mean yeah, yes it, well. it was it was this it was the big hit from mid-may through the end of july but i'm dumbfounded actually i really yeah by all for one i know Yes, I I kid you not. I don't think you can hear my audio, so I'm going to play it. If you hear my audio, let me know. I, I would. Uh, well, one, we good. shouldn't be playing copyrighted music on this feed uh, or on this podcast. No, I don't think it's going to play. I'm just. Yeah, no, I can I can throw up YouTube on my own. No, no, okay, yeah, I I totally. Yep, that's the song. Okay, by R and B anyway. group All for One. Yes, it's a very popular song. Wow, I. Uh... Wow. What kind of rock were you living under in 1994? Well, like, number two on the charts is a song I know, Stay, uh, I Missed You by Lisa Loeb. Uh, Don't recognize it. It's the, Lisa Loeb, though. Do you recognize that name? She's like the alt-rock no. princess. Um, uh, I think if you Googled her picture, you'd recognize her. It's like, you stay, or you say. No, nah, I should be singing. Oh, I, okay, I do know that song. Yeah, yeah. No, I do uh, know that song. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, number three, regulate. Yeah, number three, regulate by Warren G, featuring Nate Dog. Um, number five is Don't Turn Around by Ace of Base. We know, we know you don't remember Ace of Base. Um, no. Number six, The Fantastic Voyage by Coolio, which is the song best known to white people as the slide, slide, slippity slide song. <laughs> you don't remember that? No. <laughs> Uh, vaguely, I'm still yeah. I'm flabbergasted by all, all for one, and then number seven okay. was "Can You Feel right. Love Tonight" by Elton John. But wow, do you want, would you one. like to 
would you like to expand more on I swear by all for one? No, I just, it, it's a song that I remember. I, um, I, which is surprising. <laughs> Because uh, I, I, feel like I, I had covered. not heard that song in my life. Oh, and you know, the uh, other reason I know that song is because mm. it was covered by John Michael Montgomery, a country artist. That makes so much more sense. <laughs> so <laughs> That's just like, I'm like, where? where? <laughs> Wait, oh, 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 back up, back up, back up. Yes. I Swear is a song written by Gary Baker and Frank J. Myers that became a hit for country music artist John Michael Montgomery in 1993 and for American R&B group All for One in 1994. So oh. I am an OG when it comes to the song I Swear by, by John Michael Montgomery. Um, but the, the one that's at why the top of the charts. Okay, that makes <laughs> so much more sense. My worldview is no longer shook. Because... <laughs> Like, uh, I mean, I'll be honest, people. Uh, we we didn't listen to that much R and B and hip hop in the early '90s. I started to listen to Cube when I was in the fifth grade, maybe, but um, Cube ninety three point three. And um, but you knowing that song broke my brain for a good how long have we been recording? A good three minutes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that this all makes so much more sense now. Anywho, uh, what else? I, uh, that's it. Um, I I wanted to talk about something that I didn't mention in the intro. Uh, they released on computer um, Star Wars Tie Fighter, which was the second in the X Wing Flight Sim series. Okay, uh, you had that, didn't you? I did. I had well. I don't know if I had Tie Fighter. I had X Wing and I had X Wing versus Tie Fighter, and um, I remember that. Yeah, that I as a huge nerd and Star Wars fan, I really, really enjoyed playing those games. Even though, like, I was, I don't know, four, five. It was back in the day of the joystick, wasn't it? Yes, the joystick attached to your computer, and it was. It had like all the buttons, and uh, like you'd play a flight simulator on it if you were really boring now there's something there's something where if you talk to a gen z -er and you said yeah i remember when i had a joystick for my computer they would literally look at you and have no idea what you were talking about yeah like don't you just connect your uh ps4 controller to your bluetooth device or whatever (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah but yeah it was a wired joystick and it was a real i i really like mine i don't uh did you have a joystick uh cheap one Okay, because mine was because my dad was working for, uh, I think it was Microsoft at the time, and then um, and then it was bought by Cal K, excuse me K A O, but so he always had like cool techie stuff. He did, yeah. Um, uh, before he started working for Boeing, and um, yeah, so we had it was like this Microsoft joystick though i i completely forgot about that until you brought it up um, those things are sweet it was awesome there was like a there was a there was a slide switch on it to like for like mm-hmm. thrust oh yeah uh but i i want to talk about that because uh slide stick for thrust no star said. wars tie fight <laughs> um uh, i don't know if you know this but e3 was going on at this at this point in time a couple weeks ago, but for us just last week, um, EA dropped a whole bunch of new trailers and they released a trailer for Star Wars Squadrons, uh, which comes out in October. And it looks like it's a return to that style of flight sim. It's a, you, there's X Wings, there's TIE Fighters, you have to manage your throttle. And, so you're uh, going to have to get a nice gaming like computer now? Uh, no, it's going to be on. PlayStation 4 and Xbox. Oh man, One. but just imagine get a joystick on that thing. Oh, that'd be sweet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I'm probably just I'll probably just now uh hook up my my uh my cool Bluetooth uh third party uh controller, man. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, actually I would rather play that with a joystick. Well, actually, no. Uh, there, if you get it on the PlayStation Four, if you have the PlayStation VR, you can uh, use. You could play it in in VR, which I, ooh, yeah. I'm like that. 
that is the first time I've ever wanted to buy the PSVR. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I still have a PS3. So I also have a PS3. But that's all I have. I know. Uh, I, while I'm staring at a Wii, a Wii U, a PS4, and a PS3. Mine's just collecting dust right now. I was actually playing GTA 5 on it before I moved, but then it got put in storage. So I so you know, mine mine's backwards compatible. I don't remember which fat boy you got, but um, mine's backwards uh, compatible, so I can play GTA 3 and oh, that nice. series on it too. Yeah, I played GTA 5 for like a week when I first got it, and then mm-hmm. I literally just put it on a shelf and never played it again, and then I just started playing it again like six months ago. I just bought GTA three or gta 5 for the ps4 because it's a little I play, better i play well yeah that and i play gta 3 and those games for a little bit and i was like huh i i i wish rockstar would do a single player gta again soon did you actually did you know that uh the so they also just announced the playstation 5 i had heard that yes and the first title on the announcement trailer uh they showed rockstar's logo and then they faded into Grand Theft Auto Five. Uh, I think there are six is in the works, so that'll be interesting, right? But um, what's coming out for? Uh, not even at release, but like within the first first year of the PS Five being out, is Grand Theft Auto Five, which huh. came out on the PlayStation Three. If I wonder if it'll be even better because you know the four added some stuff and some better graphics it did say there was going to be some new stuff i think it's mostly to milk gta online until grand theft auto 6 comes out yeah but um i don't know i just thought i remember back in the day when gta came out for the computer Mm -hmm. like these guys had a side project to make it a multiplayer online thing it was like this really buggy mod you could buy and that was super fun or play that was for pc right uh, no, they started. It was on the very first one. I mean, it okay. took them a while yeah. to do it, but yeah, it was kind of cool. But it was super glitchy and terrible. So I'm glad someone else got into it, and made it better. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I don't. Apparently, there's a story in Grand Theft Auto Online, but I don't. I don't play it. It's. It. I tried playing it in the beginning, and I just thought it was dumb. Yeah. Uh, I, but apparently, it's still really popular, which is why, which is another reason why we haven't gotten another GTA for. I mean, right. you're lucky. You don't have to buy. You don't have to buy a PS4 now because there will never be a Grand Theft Auto on it. Yeah, I just have to buy an air conditioner and a fence. What do you need an air? Oh, I guess you are in that part. Of yeah, it's 90 today. Wow, it's hotter than it is here. Um, but yeah, it's. I, I'm kind of bummed. I I just got into my PS4 during quarantine because I had time on my hands, and it it is. It's it. The controller is more comfortable than the PS3. The it, it's nice. It's I like it. I I hate saying it, but I like it. I'm I'm a console gamer. Hmm. That's funny. Yeah. Coming up as a computer gamer, yeah, I can't deal with consoles. I'm terrible at them. I don't remember you being a computer gamer though. Like you had Counter Strike, and then you. Well, I guess you had uh, Half Life. Yeah, but yep. But other than that. You had you had a PlayStation. You had Playstations. You played Time Splitters a lot. But I was bad at those games. You were better than I was. Okay, well, sure. Time Splitters. <laughs> that was a good one. I forgot about that game. Uh, Time Splitters Two, I think, was the yes. Yeah, I I was never good at because I was great at GoldenEye because I had a sixty four. But then I never had a PlayStation until Grand Theft Auto Three came out. But still, I would never play those first-person shooters with the dual analog sticks, so I had no idea what was going on. And you just kick my ass every single time. It was hard because uh, GoldenEye was the single joystick, and then mm-hmm. the other games came out, and like one was the look and one was the move, and it just kind of was very confusing. But yeah. uh, now it's intuitive because uh, yeah. I played Call of Duty and Nazi Zombies and stuff like that. But, but like I'm bad, I'm generally bad at first-person shooters on console. Um, I just I'm not very fast, uh, but I'm much better on computer, and I'm even not that good on the computer. So, yeah, I could never get used to AWSD. You know, I was always lurking at the bottom of the uh, this the uh, scoreboard on Counter Strike, like mm-hmm. three and twenty seven. Oh yeah, it's, that's me <laughs> on Call of Duty. Yeah, but it's fun or Battlefront, I guess. Now, um, yeah, uh, the other I. 
I, th- I think this is becoming a Tom Hanks podcast, but we have to talk about Forrest Gump, don't we? I feel like we should. Sure, why not? Like, Forrest Gump was a movie. Done. Y- yes. Uh, uh, starring Tom Hanks. So, so, uh, <laughs> not Dude, very much of a conversation starter. Yeah. Um, Please tell me you've seen this movie. Uh, uh, or not, do, you, do you need my bad uh, you know, it's, it's funny because I actually literally I think it was yesterday was thinking uh, to myself because someone was referencing the movie I was like I don't know what that movie's about so <laughs> please educate me in oh, uh, one minute what is that movie about all right uh, start the clocks now okay Forrest Gump is about a mentally handicapped child named Forrest who had like um, leg braces or something so he couldn't he, he he like had polio legs or something but somehow got over them don't know the backstory on that uh, and eventually he's told by this girl Jenny to run away from his bullies and he does run and he never stops running um, and then as he grows up he's kind of spliced into all these events around the the growing nation of the United States um, during like you know civil rights movement uh, I think he's in Vietnam uh, and which is where they introduce Gary Sinise as Lieutenant Dan Lieutenant Dan has his legs blown off uh, he meets Bubba who is his black best friend that wants to open a shrimp business but Bubba gets killed so then um, Forrest takes over that idea and I've already run out of time um <laughs> It sounds fairly esoteric and sort of annoying. Yeah. So the girl, Jenny, he's like in love with this girl since childhood. And um, she keeps popping in and out of his life. And she she's sweet on him at times. Other times, she's just a terrible human to him. Uh, she has an AIDS baby with him, which I guess means he gets HIV. Oh, my Cause God. She, she, Is cause this she part di- of the movie? Yeah. She died. Like one of the final one of the final scenes i want to say is she comes back home where forest is and she like she hooks up with him finally and then has a kid and it's his kid and but she then dies of aids and then uh so yeah um and then he the kid's Haley joel osmond because every child in the 90s was Haley joel osmond um and yeah uh like oh i they might have they might have slept together earlier in the movie then she had the kid and then she comes back home after contracting aids so he doesn't have forrest gump doesn't get aids um which is not funny i'm just it's so i'm confused is he mentally retarded or isn't he or is he just kind of simple uh, I don't think we say that anymore, Andrew. Uh, but it's okay. It, whatever. I, it's he. He is developmentally challenged. I don't know to which degree because he's he's functional, but he's also not very self aware. Like, okay. He like. Oh, here he has a below average IQ of seventy five. Okay. Below average. Did I say below average? You did. Okay. Uh, uh, so this is where Run Forest Runs came from, uh, the Bubba Gump, Bubba Gump Shrimp Company <laughs> restaurants, uh, uh, Lieutenant Dan, Ice Cream Cone, um, Gary Sinise gains his popularity from I, this movie because he gets his legs blown off and then he's like an angry Vietnam vet and then Forrest, I don't know, gives him the shrimping company after he makes it. Uh, all that paved the way for csi new york exactly yes uh and the lieutenant dan ban uh which is headlined by gary sinise i actually like csi new york the best out of the three four yeah i there was always like shot in such a way that it looked like you could there's no light it was just like someone needed to turn a light on that's dark figures moving around the room yeah but yeah, Forrest Gump, uh, there, there's a lot of like, he meets, I think he meets John F. Kennedy. Uh, and this is like early use of CG of splicing someone into like old video, you know? Um, I know he meets Nixon. Uh, like the but, first deep fakes? 
yeah. oh god yes um and there there's a point in the movie where i think jenny leaves so is he's heartbroken or something and he just starts running across the country back and forth um and then he mm. his face is all muddy someone gives him a yellow shirt wipes the shirt off on his face gives the shirt back to the guy mm. And it's like a perfect smiley face from mud, and from then the mud. guy goes on to like, yeah, to goes on to create the fi- the smiley face face, makes a bunch of money that way. It's he's he becomes a national ping pong champion at one point while Jenny and runs into Jenny while she's a part of a Black Panther movement. It sounds and, like everyone should watch uh, this movie then. It's it is a great movie. I would. I would say it's the Citizen Kane of the 1990s, um, but it, it yeah I'm is, not going to watch it. I know yeah it, because you don't watch anything anyone watches, <laughs> um, but it, it it is it's Tom Hanks doing a great lower than average IQ person, and uh, it, it it's I don't know I like I feel like everyone's parents <laughs> in 1993 we're like yeah or 1994 we're like yeah force gum who who doesn't love uh tom hanks though i mean he's one of those guys that's like sort of the more down to earth all hollywood types um so i'm just kind of waiting for it to come out that he was actually a rapist but uh, in the meantime who doesn't love tom hanks <laughs> god uh Sa- sally field isn't it as as his Ugh. mother i um, hate that woman why She's annoying, and she also played a super annoying character on uh, ER as Abby Lockhart's mother. She was uh, bipolar, and her voice actor. is just grating, literally grating. It's the horrible. Or <laughs> no? Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. It, it's. I think he meets Elvis at one point for some reason. Oh my god. Yeah. Anyway, um, just that—that that was like the big movie. Uh, I for us, I would say Angels in the Outfield was, or The Mask. That, that was, I I don't the Angels in the Outfield one. I don't really have a major recollection of that one as much. But The Mask I saw repeatedly. It was always like super entertaining. If you didn't like Jim Carrey though, it was incredibly annoying. I just watched Ace Ventura recently, and I was just like, wow, this is incredibly Jim Carrey from the early '90s, and I. It doesn't age great. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, the mask is also Cameron Diaz's okay, put it. first. Yeah, it, well, it doesn't. It's like uh, there's a lot of like transphobic stuff. Like there's there's minutes worth of him like feeling like he's been violated in the shower because he made out with um with Fink or Ein- Einhorn, who's a woman, but was formerly Ray Finkel, the football player. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, the mask. Um, I thought it was stupid when the dog put the mask on. <laughs> yeah, I'll agree with that. And did you know there was like a sequel like 10 years later made by Nickelodeon that I think was only no. on TV? Yeah, it was bad. Why? Jim Carrey wasn't in it. It was Son of the Mask. So like a baby gets the mask and becomes the mask. Wow. Yeah. Um, that's just but Cameron terrible. Diaz. That, I think that was Cameron Diaz's first film. God, role. She was in that, really? Oh my gosh! These actors. She was, she was love interest. Yeah, nineties. Wow. And then I think her popularity from that rolled into something about Mary, which was also nineties ish. And then, and then Charlie. I don't know Angels. any. I don't know who's in anything. That's crazy. Well, Ben Stiller was in that movie. Wow. Anyway, uh, well, that's so that's the one where Cameron Diaz, she puts the the semen in her hair and it sticks up because she thinks it's hair gel. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Gosh, that's so, uh, that's so good. I like that. I'm going to watch that movie again. But I'm not going to watch Forrest Gump. No. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm still talking about The Mask. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, <laughs> sorry, I got sidetracked. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I maybe we should just finish talking about Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Or at yeah. the very least, uh, Amazon. I didn't realize Amazon was founded back in 1994. Amazon.com specifically, because I didn't realize the internet existed back then. I thought it was online, specifically as an online bookstore. 
Um, huh. But now, obviously, is a global sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, sensation. Yeah, yeah. Phen- phenomena. Um, yeah, but yeah, that guy's super rich. Um, apparently, he's getting divorced. Like, <laughs> oh, can you yeah. imagine? Oh, Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's that's one divorce where if you split it down the middle, you still don't notice anything. Well, there's a, and there's a picture from of Elon Musk back like in the PayPal days in some crappy office. Oh yeah, um, I forgot. I, I forgot he was like PayPal. He yeah, and he co-founded it or something. So yeah, yeah, those are all about the same time, the dot com bubble and everything. Boom. But uh, yeah, Amazon yeah. is just uh, insane right now. I mean, that guy's got more money than. Um, I have hairs on my head. It's just ridiculous. Well, yeah, but like I have more hairs on my head than you do too. Oh, burn. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. I think my hairline is starting to recede. Um, <laughs> as for that, I'm going to go bald. Uh, but yeah, like I have, I think I have an Amazon package or two coming to me right now. Yeah. And I have Amazon prime, obviously, um, yeah. Amazon is all over Amazon web services. They host like everything. I mean, really that's how you run a business. You just go from like starting small to just doing literally everything. Um, and yeah, you lose some, some of the maybe quality, uh, in the process or, um, you know, there's, there's negatives to growing that big that fast, but overall it's just, uh, quite the impressive business feat. Yeah. I wish I was that, that impressive. Um, but yeah, and Seattle business, um, uh, people, yeah, Microsoft, yeah, true. uh, Amazon, it's, I, I hear the techies have really like have destroyed Seattle culture, um, from what we remember in the nineties. Well, also none of them are from Seattle originally. That's the, that's why. Uh, yeah. And they're like more like yuppie, I guess would, would be the word than hipster but when you think about it i mean they really i mean it, they've built seattle into what it is economically today i mean yeah of course you get your older stuff you know mm-hmm. that built the big skyscrapers but now it's all about these companies yeah so i don't know it's uh and um, i uh, just it's just, i shop on amazon all the time and uh you know, it's it's definitely a good place to get stuff. I think there's always something to be said for supporting small businesses and whatnot. But I mean, who can beat just buying stuff and having it delivered like the next day? Yeah, I, it's it, it's very convenient. I'm still on two day delivery out here, but I know what you mean. Uh, Amazon Prime pays for itself in shipping. Oh, definitely. The the and then just the video content that you can get too. I mean, it's definitely worth it. Yeah. Although terrible, terrible system uh, or like user interface for the videos. Yeah, I'll agree. And actually, I'm try- still waiting for the next Grand Tour episode to come out. That was supposed to come out uh, like forever ago. It's in the can. Um, I don't know. That's what I heard. Finished. But if, yeah, I've heard that for months now. And it's like, oh, come on, guys. I, I just Googled that a few days ago. Yeah, it's not there yet. Okay, whatever. Um. <laughs> Yeah. So, all right. Um, that's July 1994. Yes. Uh, I'm I'm Brandon, and that's Andrew. Find us on Twitter at namely 90s with a nine zero s, or find our personal accounts at be shooty and at namely Andrew, and tell us what you want us to talk about on future episodes. You can also contact us through our website namely 90scom Please subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, Panko, Deezer, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and wherever you get your podcasts with at through hi. Uh, this has been Namely 90s. Uh, that's this week's edition of Namely 90s, and we will catch you next time. <laughs>